Hi. Yesterday, we discussed different ways that we can use number lines in math. Today, we are going to focus on one way we can use number lines, and that's to help us round. Your objective is to round to the nearest thousand using a number line. So what is 24 rounded to the nearest 10? When we are rounding, we are estimating. If we are rounding to the nearest 10, then our number is going to be an even 10. In this case, our number, if we are rounding to the nearest 10, is going to be either 20 or 30. So when we are rounding, it helps to know where the middle is. In this case, the middle, right between 20 and 30, is 25. You can also think of rounding as if we are going up and down a hill. If we put a ball at the top of the hill, not quite at the middle, then it's going to roll back down the hill. If we put a ball at the middle of the hill or anywhere higher, in this case, that would be 25, 26, 27, 28, or 29, then our ball is going to roll down to the next number, which would be 30. In this problem, 24 is right here, right before 25. That means that our number 24 is not quite at the middle of the hill. So that means our number is going to roll back down. 24 is going to round down. 24 is less than halfway between 20 and 30. So 24 rounded to the nearest 10 will be 20. Perhaps you've heard some tips and rules for using rounding before. A very common one is a rhyme. Five or more, make it soar. Four or less, let it rest. So let's look at this a little bit more. In this case, our number 24 has a four at the end in the ones place. And so four or less, we let it rest. That's how we knew that our number was going to roll back down to the lower 10, which was 20. But which digit do I look at when I'm rounding? When you're rounding to the nearest 10, you're going to look at the ones digit. So in the number 24, we were looking at the ones digit, which is a four. If you were rounding to the nearest 100, you're going to look at the tens digit. In this number, 568, the tens digit is the six. That's the digit we would look at if we were rounding. And if we are rounding to the nearest thousand, then we are going to look at the hundreds digit. In the number 4,721, seven is the digit in the hundreds place. So seven is the digit we will look at to round. Here's another problem. What is 365 rounded to the nearest hundred? If we are rounding to the nearest hundred, on our number line, we're going to have even hundreds at the ends. That'll be a 300 and a 400. We know 365 is somewhere between these two numbers. 350 is right here in the middle. I got that by counting by tens. 360 is right next door, and then 370 is next to that, still counting by tens. I know that 365 is somewhere between 360 and 370. Here's my visual aid once again, my hill. I can remember that if my number is less than halfway up my hill, it's going to roll back down to the lower hundred. If my number is halfway up the hill or more, meaning that digit I'm looking at is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, then it's going to keep rolling up to the next hundred. 365 is somewhere between 360 and 370. In fact, it's right here, right in the middle of the two. There's my halfway point. 365 is farther than halfway on this number line. That means it's going to roll up to the next hundred. 
365 is more than halfway between 300 and 400. So 365 rounded to the nearest 100 will be 400. Here are a few more problems for us to look at. I'm still rounding each number to the nearest 100. So that means the digit I am looking at is in the tens place. However, these numbers are scattered all around. So my number line is going from 6,000 to 7,000, and I'm going to have to be looking for where each number is on my number line. Here's 6,312. When you look here, this visual aid might help you see that 6,312 is less than halfway between 6,300 and 6,400. Or maybe you knew you're rounding to the nearest hundred, so you look at the tens place. My digit in the tens place is a one. One is definitely less than four. Therefore, I know it's going to round down to 6,300. Here's my next number, 6,709. When I look at this chart, I can see that my number is less than halfway up the hill, so it's going to roll down to the next even hundred. If I look at my number and I look at the tens digit, I see there's a zero, which means that my number is definitely going to round down to that lower hundred. In this case, 6,700. Here's my next number, 6,141. Here on my chart, it's really close, but that number is less than halfway up the hill. So it's going to round down to the next, that lower even hundred. If I look at my number, I see a four in the tens digit. Four or less, let it rest. I know my number will round down to 6,100. And finally, here's 6,482. When I look at my hill, I see that this number is more than halfway past. When I look at my hill, I see that this number is more than halfway along the hill, which means it's going to round to the next higher hundred. If I look at my number and I look at the tens digit, I see an eight. If my number is five, six, seven, if my digit is five, six, seven, eight, or nine, I know I'm rounding up, so I will round to 6,500. But remember, our objective is to round to the nearest thousand using a number line. Those last practices were still rounding to the nearest hundred. So let's take a look at rounding to the nearest thousand. What is 9,500 rounded to the nearest thousand? If I'm rounding to the nearest thousand, I need to look at the hundreds digit. Here, my hundreds digit is a five. Here's my number line with 9,000 at one end and 10,000 at the other end, and right in the middle is 9,500. Here's my hill, my visual aid, and I remember that if my number is right in the middle, it's going to round up to the next highest thousand. 9,500 is exactly halfway between 9,000 and 10,000. So 9,500 rounded to the nearest thousand is 10,000. Remember, if it's five or more, make it soar. Here's another one. What is 6,541 rounded to the nearest thousand? Once again, if my number is rounding to the nearest thousand, I need to pay attention to the hundreds digit. In this case, the hundreds digit is five. Here's my number line with my two even thousands at the ends and right in the middle is 6,500. I counted by hundreds to fill in the rest of my chart to make it easier to locate this number. And here's my visual aid, my hill, to remind me when I need to round down or round up. My number, 6,541, is somewhere between 6,500 and 6,600. 
my number is more than halfway between 6,000 and 7,000. So 6,541 rounded to the nearest thousand will round up to 7,000. Remember, if it's five or more, make it soar. The digit I was looking at in the hundreds place, it was a five. So that's how I knew I could round up. What is 7,095 rounded to the nearest thousand? Here's my number line with an even thousand at either end, 7,000 and 8,000. And there in the middle is 7,500. I've counted by hundreds on each of these boxes to make it easier for me to locate my number. I have a zero in the hundreds place, so it's not even past 7,100. That means 7,095 is less than halfway between 7,000 and 8,000. So 7,095 rounded to the nearest thousand is 7,000. Remember, if your digit is four or less, let it rest. Here, the digit I needed to look at in the hundreds place was a zero. What is 7,500 rounded to the nearest thousand? Well, if I'm rounding to the nearest thousand, then that means I need to look at the hundreds digit. In this case, the hundreds digit is a five. So I have two strategies I can use. I have a number line. I can look at where my number is and see if it's halfway or if it's past halfway so I can round up or if it's less than halfway so I can round down or I can look at the digit, the hundreds digit, to let me know if I need to round up or down. My hundreds digit is a five. Maybe I remember the rhyme. If it's four or less, let it rest. If it's five or more, make it soar. Or maybe I use the number line and I locate my number, 7,500. My number is exactly halfway between 7,000 and 8,000. So 7,500 rounded to the nearest thousand is 8,000. What is 7,603 rounded to the nearest thousand? I could look at the hundreds digit to see how I'm going to round, or I could locate my number on a number line. My digit that I am looking at to round is six. Here's my number on the number line. 7,603 is more than halfway between 7,000 and 8,000. 7,603 rounded to the nearest thousand is 8,000. Five or more, make it soar. What is 85,210 rounded to the nearest thousand? I'm still rounding to the nearest thousand, so which digit do I need to look at? I still need to look at the hundreds digit. In this case, that's a two. I could also use this number line to help me locate that number. I'm counting by hundreds still. Even though my number is a little bigger, my rules still stick. Remember, if it's four or less, let it rest. If it's five or more, make it soar. The digit I'm looking at is a two, so that is four or less. I can locate my number on the number line, and that also shows me it's less than halfway between 85,000 and 86,000. So if I'm going to round this to the nearest thousand, I'm going to round my number to 85,000. So to review, if we are rounding, we need to remember which digit we are looking at. If I round to the nearest 10, I need to look at the ones digit. In this case, the four. If I'm rounding to the nearest 100, I need to look at the tens digit. In this case, a six. If I'm rounding to the nearest thousand, I need to look at the hundreds digit. 
in this case, that's the seven. When I look at those digits, I can remember the little rule. If it's five or more, make it soar. That means if my number is five, six, seven, eight, or nine, it will go higher. If my digit is four or less, let it rest. So if the digit I'm looking at is a four, a three, a two, a one, then I will round down. The other tool I can use for rounding is my visual aid, this hill. I can remember if my number is not quite halfway up the hill, if my number is less than halfway, then I'm going to round down. If my number is exactly halfway, or if it's any more than halfway, then I'm going to round up. 